Hello friends. Yes, my hair is very different than the last time you saw me. I got it chopped off just yesterday, but I filmed this video earlier this week, so you won't see it in there. Today I'm sharing a small glimpse into my life in the form of a series of vignettes chronicling a typical weekend. I personally love peeking in on these kinds of what I do in a day videos because I'm really nosy about the people that I admire. I challenged myself to try my hand at it after recently being inspired by my friend and fellow weirdo, the extraordinarily talented Courtney Lane. Courtney Lane is a historian and hair work artist and on her Hair and Now YouTube channel, Courtney uploaded A Day in the Life of a Victorian Hair Worker, which I will link to in the description box below, and I found it wonderfully fascinating. My day might not seem particularly exciting, but it was practically perfect. I don't really like to spend my whole day reading, for example, or binge watching movies, or doing just one thing, even if it's just one thing I love. Instead, I like to do a little bit of all of the things I love, spread over the course of a day. We can't do all of the things we want right now with quarantine and social distancing, so that's why I like to plan days like this for myself, to give myself a little something to look forward to, and so I don't feel like I'm missing out. A few treats for myself, a bit of self-care, some housework and tidying, some time outdoors, making progress on projects, these are just a few of the things that I include in what I would consider a good day. And of course, that might look totally different for you. I'd love it if you could share in the comments what your idea of a perfect day looks like and how you've adapted that for life in 2020. In the meantime, let's get into my day. Waking up early is one of the most important things I do for myself. As someone who is very selfish with my time, I need these pre-dawn hours as a still, silent space meant solely for me and my thoughts. Going for a walk around the neighborhood at this time is a wonderful way to get my blood moving and my brain working. And at the pace of a brisk stroll, it's not exactly high intensity cardio. But who would want that at 5 in the morning anyway? After my walk, I get cleaned up. And you've seen plenty of beauty routines and no doubt you wash your own face. So you don't need to see how it's done. But here's a peek at some of the skincare products I use if you're interested. Let me know in the comments some of your favorites as well. I have been recording my dream since I was a teenager, and it is just another ritual I practice early in the day as a method of waking up my mind. Recalling the strange minutiae of my nocturnal adventures is such an interesting way to both process stuff I am dealing with, even if it's just on a weird subconscious level, as well as provide a little mental obstacle course for my thoughts. I know most people really don't want to hear about your dreams, but not me. I am all ears. Feel free to share any particularly crazy ones with me anytime you like. Afterward, I sometimes read from a little book of meditations that a friend gave me a few years ago. Aha! Here we have the real reason I wake up early. There's something about the calm and quiet of early morning, the eerie hush of a world still sleeping that I find, well, strangely energizing. I love knowing that no one can bother me at this time, and I can well and truly be left alone. Somehow, midnight or 1am doesn't feel the same to me, 
that's just a creepy time to be awake. Even the quality of darkness seems different. I know a lot of my night owl friends would disagree with me on this, but it takes all kinds, I guess. At any rate, my true motivation for waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning is just so that I can curl up and read. My partner and I both work from home in our respective jobs, and we live in the suburbs of a not very big town. So we don't have much reason to go anywhere, and there wouldn't really be anywhere to go if we did. The isolation of the pandemic then didn't quite affect us in terms of what we do or who we see outside the house. Regardless, we thought it might be good to make an effort to partake of the world, even in a limited way. So a few times a month, we've been taking a picnic breakfast down to a secluded park on the beach, which is not far from where we live. So far, perhaps because we've timed it early in the morning and at high tide, we hardly see a soul. I think there was maybe one other person here on this particular morning, and they were all the way on the other side of the park. We definitely made a handful of avian friends, though. I don't love housework, and most of the time I'd rather be doing anything else. A dusty house is a sign of someone who's got better things to do, if you ask me. But there are some things I genuinely enjoy, such as getting lost in the meditative swishes of broom bristles shepherding a skittery crumble of autumn leaves off the back porch. And maybe sweeping just feels like a lovely, old-timey thing to do. Whereas scrubbing the bathtub is just a modern chore to grumble about. I thought that while I was already out in the garden, I mean, such as it is, as of right now everything has mostly died off or was eaten by slugs and squirrels, I might plant some green onion tops. I'm no one to be giving anyone any garden tips, but these guys are some of the easiest things to grow, and once you get them going, you won't have to buy green onions for a long time. And of course, I always welcome every opportunity to step outdoors and listen to our beautiful wind chimes. I think they sound pretty majestic. I sniffed a few nasturtium blossoms, all three of them and some leaves to make a vinaigrette, which I will absolutely link the recipe for below because it was tangy and peppery and floral and delicious. We drizzled it over some mescaline greens supplemented by an entire bagged salad because as I said, and as you can see, the old garden here isn't producing much right now. And I don't know why I emphasize right now. We've never gotten much of a harvest from it. Oh well, we keep trying. While I do love a few minutes of bath time, and I do quite literally mean a few minutes, I can't soak any longer than that because I start to feel a bit restless and antsy. Our year-round, sticky, sultry, semi-tropical weather doesn't lend well to stewing in a vat of hot juices. It's less an experience to luxuriate in and more an opportunity to find oneself cranky and miserable and even hotter than you were just a few minutes ago. So I have a bit of a bath cheat. I treat my feet. I run a tub half full, lay out a towel and my favorite socks in advance, and utilize my full arsenal of bathing potions to give an oft-neglected portion of my body a lavish indulgence. 
Today I am using a marvelous salt scrub from Paintbox Soapworks. And not one, but two body creams from Balefire Apothecary. There's just a little bit left in each jar, so I thought I'd use one for each foot. Both of these individuals run small businesses creating incredible skincare and body products, and I adore them both. I'll link to both of the shops in the box below. I love to bake, although my results are not always perfect. Oftentimes far from it, as you can tell from these enormously lopsided loaves. This is a sandwich bread recipe using mature sourdough starter or sourdough starter discard, however you refer to it. I began a sourdough journey earlier this spring, as did many of us kitchen witches in quarantine, and I found that I like all of the funny little recipes you can make with a discard more than I like making an actual loaf of sourdough. This particular recipe is courtesy of Busby Bakes, and having made it a handful of times, I can say it is fairly foolproof and by far my favorite. I'll link to his blog and the recipe below. I roasted up a butternut squash for dinner. I love the idea of these golden gourds as the base for an autumnal soup, but they always yield a result that's much too sweet for my palate. Many recipes play on that sweetness with the addition of cinnamon, maple syrup, or even apples, and that doesn't quite feel like supper to me. A sweet soup doesn't even strike me as a proper meal. I found that making a sort of curried situation with some savory herbs and aromatics, warming spices, a hint of peppery heat, and the sassy brightness of a bit of lime juice makes a soup far more suited to my tastes. As I work, my little kitchen altar presides over the culinary activities and reminds me what a sacred practice it is to be able to feed the people I love. And on a personal, sensory level, to delight in every chop and stir and sizzling smell. As the day dwindles and draws to a close, I like to relax with slow, restful activities such as more reading or perhaps knitting on a project I'm currently working on. I guess that makes it sound like the earlier parts of my day were filled with high energy activities and adventures, doesn't it? Obviously by this point you know that's not the case. But I wasn't lounging around and taking it easy either. That's what makes me feel that these are the best sorts of days. I putter at my own pace. I am productive in my own sense of the word, and I'm doing exactly what I want to do, and nothing more. And at 8 p.m. on this particular evening, I wanted to create scores of stitches with this charming yarn in shades of lavender speckled with sooty charcoal shadows, while watching my friend Claudia's most recent video, in which she explores with us a beautiful old cemetery in the Netherlands. For those who are curious about yarn, patterns, and graveyards, I will link to all of these things below. It's a bit of an early bedtime tonight, as I planned another 5am wake up for walking and an early start to the day. Before retiring for the evening, I like to scent myself with something sleepy and soothing. It could be psychosomatic, but when I do this, I am almost certain that I have a better quality of slumber and dreams. A current favorite is Frostbitten TKO from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, a limited wintry variant of one of their Panacea perfume oils. It smells like chili marshmallows and soft sweet herbs, and my head is almost instantly searching for a pillow when I dab this fragrance on my wrists. I'm a Taurus, so of course I have favorite pajamas, or more accurately, pajama bottoms accompanied by beloved t-shirts such as this one here from one of my favorite artists, whose shop I will link below. Back to the bottoms. 
I have several pair from a company called Sudara, a brand through which your purchase supports living wage employment and skills training for women in India who are at a high risk or survivors of sex trafficking. Not only are their jammies and loungewear absolutely beautiful, but I sleep better knowing that I'm supporting a company striving for sustainable change and working to empower women and girls. I'll end this by noting that I purchased these with my own money and I was not sponsored to say any of this, but Sadara, you can feel free to call me. So there you have it. A typical weekend for a ghoul next door. As a bit of bonus material, and in case you are curious, here is the finished shawl that I was working on. This video was a lot of fun to think about and to film. And it actually made me very mindful of how I choose to spend my time. But of course, like much of the content on YouTube, it's uh, a bit of an exercise in narcissism, which doesn't really change for me how interesting I, I find these kinds of videos and how prevalent they are. So obviously I'm not the only one. I almost forgot, and I did want to give mention to this this is the book I was reading on my tablet, but I do actually have a physical copy as well. This is Dark Archives by Megan Rosenblum. It's an investigation into the historic and scientific truths Books. boasting the most macabre of distinctions. Yes, we're talking about books bound in human skin. It is a fascinating, thrillingly researched book, and I recently interviewed Megan about it. Um, so you can learn more about the book and more about her. She is a lovely human being over on Oat Macabre, and I will link uh, to that interview below. Ghoulish reading material aside, thank you as always for stopping by my channel here. I hope you'll take a moment to leave me a comment and let me know what you thought about today's video or what you like to do on the weekends. I know right now they look quite different than they did even a year ago. So I'm always curious as to what you all are up to as well. I hope you'll consider uh, subscribing to my channel if you'd like to see more of my non-adventures. And until next time, later weirdos.